Hello and welcome to this webinar series on SQL 101. In this series, today we are going to look at the DDL statements, which are the data definition language statements, and we're going to look at the create, the drop, and the alter table statements. Now to execute these statements, I am already logged into my SQL Server Management Studio, and this is where I'm going to show you the syntax and the execution for these statements. Now this is the query window that I would be writing my queries on, and I want to create a database, especially for the SQL 101 sessions where I can show you these queries. So the statement that I'm going to use for this is the create database statement, which is again a DDL statement, a create statement, and let's call this database SQL 101. Then I just put a semicolon to end the sentence or the statement, and I go over here in the toolbar and press the execute button, or as you can see that I can also press the F5 key. So execute and I get a message that the command has completed successfully, so, which means that I should be now able to see a database called SQL 101. So for that, to check that, I go on to the Object Explorer pane and I go to Databases, click on the plus sign to expand them. Now, can I see my database over here? Not yet. So what I need to do is, again, right click on the databases, refresh it, and now I should be able to see my database over here. This is the database that I have created for executing these queries. Now the next step is to write the table or to create that table using the create command. So I'm going to write that statement over here, but I want to create that in my SQL 101 database. So I'm going to go over here where I can see the database as master. So just clicking on this drop down, I have the list of all the databases available for me to write queries. So I'm going to choose my SQL 101 database that I have created for this purpose. Let's simply remove the statement. All right. So let's look at the create table statement now. Let's uh, uh, try to create a table called customer. So the statement goes like this. Create table and then the table name. So customer. Then next line, open brackets. Then the column name that I want in this table. Let's say I want cust ID. Then the data type. So this would be an integer because this is going to be my key column probably. So I would make it as integer. So that is int. Since it is going to be my key column, let me make it an identity column. So identity column is available in some of the databases that helps you to uh, mention that column as an auto-incremented column. So you would have values like one, two, three, four, so on. So I would make it as an identity column over here. And then the nullability. Now, since I'm going to make it my key column, this should be not nullable. So let me just put not null over here. Now, I want more columns to be added to this table. So I'm going to put a comma over here and keep on continuing with the columns that I want to add to this table. So let's say the next column is going to be a first name. Now, that is a column name. What is the data type I want? This would be taking string value. The data type I want is and varchar. Now varchar is basically variable length. I want that, but the maximum length of any name that I'm expecting would be around 50. So this is my data length now, 50. Again, this must similarly Track. The data length is similar of 50, and again, a nullable column. Now, let me add another column called the birth date. Now, this birth date column, uh, I want to restrict this column to have only date values in it. I should not be able to accept any integer values or any string values. So let me define the data type as date. This would make sure at the database level that this column can only have the date values. Again, it might not have values sometimes, so let's make it a nullable column. And the last, last column, let it be gender. Now gender, I know that I only want the abbreviation, so it would always have a fixed length, that is one. So I can define it as an anchor column and the length as one. And again, a nullable column. 
Now to find all my columns, just close the brackets over here and put a semicolon. Now I want to execute this query, so select this query, press the F5 button or execute. And here you will get the statement, your message as command completed successfully. Let's go and check in a database. So this is the SQL 101 database. We have expanded it. Let's expand the tables view. And here we have this table that we created. If you click on the button over here, you can check that the columns have been created as defined. So this is your create table statement. The syntax being the keyword create, table, then the table name that you want, open brackets, the column name that you want, the data type of the column, if it is, has to be an identity column, and then the nullability of the column. You find all your columns separated by a comma, and then close the bracket for a certain column. This is your create table statement. Now we're going to look at the alter table statement. Now let's say that I want to add, I missed adding one column, and now I want to add another column to this table. So what should I do? Should I be dropping the table and recreating it? That is one option, but if it's a very big table, if it already has data in it, that's not a, fly, a viable option. So the thing that I'm going to do is use the alter statement. The alter statement goes like this, alter, table and the table that I want to alter to so the table name that I want to alter, alter table customer, then I want to add a column. Let's say it's called marital status. So let's add that column. And again, define the uh, data type. Let's say it's anchor one data length and the labelity and a semicolon. So this is how the syntax goes. Let's try to execute and see if our syntax is correct. Execute this, the syntax is correct. And now let's check if this column has been added. So go to the table, right click, refresh, and expand the columns. And now we have this column added as we defined. So this is how you add column to, a, to an existing table. Now let's say that uh, by mistake, I define the NYCAR 50 for my first name and I'm getting some data that has length more than 50. So now I want to change the data length for this column. Now what should I do? Again, I can use the alt table statement, so alt table and the name of the table I want to alter, alt table customer, then alter column because now I am modifying the definition of the column. So alter column, and the column name here is first name. And I want to change the data length. So and right char, let's make it 100. So the liability should be the same. Semicolon. Let's select this and execute. Command completed successfully. Let's check it over here. Go to the table name. Refresh. Expand the column list. And first name, now it's Anvachar 100. So we have modified the column the column data length. Now let's say that I added the column gender, but I do not want it now. I want to remove this column. Uh, I have really no need for this column. Then what can I do? Again, the alter statement comes to the rescue. So alter table, name of the table that I want to alter, and then drop column, and the column name that I want to drop, so gender. So drop column, gender. Put a semicolon over here. Execute this query. Command completed successfully. Let's go back and check. Right click, refresh, check the columns. The gender column has been dropped. So this is how you can use the alt table statement to add columns, to modify columns, or to drop columns. Now let's say I don't need this table anymore, and I want to drop this table all together, then what is my command? Drop table, table name. So it's prompting me as well. So if uh, in this case, I have only one table. If I had more than one, it would have given the list of those tables. So let's select this table, drop table customer, semicolon, execute this, and the table would have dropped. So let's refresh the table list. And now there's no table called customer over here. So these are different DDL statements that can be used on the syntaxes along with their syntaxes.
In our next session, we will be looking at the DML statements, which are data manipulation language statements like the select statement, the insert statement, the delete statement, and so on. Thank you for watching this session.